Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Sid Cowley. I'm a PhD student studying at the University of York and working on diverter plasma physics at the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy. Today is Wednesday the 31st of May and I hope your day is going well. It can only get better with this week's episode of Fusion News. Stories today include 1. Nuclear fusion plant needs $7 billion supply chain. Survey shows. 2. Mitsubishi Corporation invests in Kyoto Fusioneering, a spin-off from Kyoto University. 3. What is the future of fusion energy? 4. Chinese EV maker NIO invests in nuclear fusion startup. 5. X rolls royce chief joins fusion startup with big ambitions for clean power. And as always, I'll have some bonus stories at the end for you. 1. Nuclear fusion plant needs $7 billion supply chain. Survey shows. Our first story today comes from Reuters and covers a report from the Fusion Industry Association on supply chains for nuclear fusion. The main focus of the report was a survey of 26 private fusion companies and 34 supplier companies on the opportunities and challenges of the fusion supply chain. And what is incredibly clear, both from the article and from the original report, is that fusion is not a small industry, and it certainly won't be getting any smaller anytime soon. In fact, in 2022, fusion companies spent over 500 million US dollars on their supply chain. What's more, the article mentions that as fusion companies begin to develop their first-of-a-kind power plants, supply chain spending is projected to grow to over 7 billion US dollars. That's billion with a B. This presents incredible economic opportunities for engineering and supply chain companies, but also presents an incredible challenge for scaling up quickly. According to Andrew Holland, CEO of the Fusion Industry Association, the biggest challenge, honestly, is just scale. We want to make sure the supply chain companies are aware that fusion is coming so they can make investments to scale up. Two, Mitsubishi Corporation invests in Kyoto Fusioneering, a spin-off from Kyoto University. Our second story today comes from Bloomberg and covers a recent oversubscribed Series C funding round for the fusion technology startup Kyoto Fusioneering. The startup, which was founded by researchers from Kyoto University, focuses on developing key technologies for fusion commercialization. Technologies such as gyrotrons, which are used for plasma heating for magnetic confinement fusion devices. The recent funding round in May raised 79 million US dollars and included backers such as the Mitsubishi Corporation. Three, what is the future of fusion energy? The second article today comes from Scientific American and was written by Philip Ball and is one of those fantastic overview pieces on the principles and landscape of fusion energy. The article starts by discussing the history of fusion. With this, the author discusses the principles and methods to achieve the confinement required for fusion. Ways you may be familiar with, including the tokamak, the stellarator, and laser-driven inertial fusion approaches. The article also discusses key players in the fusion landscape, highlighting massive public projects such as the National Ignition Facility in the US, the UK's STEP program, and the ITER project, a tokamak under construction in France that will be the largest fusion device in the world when complete, weighing over 23,000 metric tons. But among the massive public projects, the article also features the emerging fusion industry, mentioning FIA members Commonwealth Fusion Systems in Massachusetts, General Fusion in Canada, and Tokamak Energy in the UK. Four, Chinese EV maker NIO invests in nuclear fusion startup. Our next story today is another one from Reuters and covers the announcement that the Chinese electric vehicle company, NIO, has recently invested in fusion startup. Neo Fusion. And no, I didn't get that right. The names, unfortunately, are very similar. NIO for the EV company and NEO for the fusion company. Now, the startup was founded with a registration capital of roughly $700 million, of which the Shanghai based automobile manufacturer has invested $142 million in. Following on from the heels of Microsoft's investment into FIA member Helion, featured in the last episode of Fusion News, this story adds to the growing line of engineering companies, tech companies, and venture capital funds that are pivoting from traditional investments to the growing fusion industry. Five, X rolls royce chief joins fusion startup with big ambitions for clean power. 
Our final story covers Warren East, the former CEO of Rolls-Royce. The story from the Financial Times deals with the ex-executive who previously ran the UK chip designer branch of Rolls-Royce and has now joined the Oxford-based Fusion Industry Association member, Tokamak Energy. Warren East was appointed following the appointment of Warwick Matthews, another former Rolls-Royce executive, to Tokamak Energy's board. Having experience in one of the UK's most influential engineering firms, East believes he is well-suited to make nuclear fusion a reality. Since, in his words, there's work to be done, but it is engineering work rather than science experiments. What's more, he believes that both Tokamak Energy and Rolls-Royce could be key players in advancing the fusion industry in the UK, stating Rolls-Royce is an example of a supply chain that is very UK-centric, and I don't see why we can't do the same again in the realm of fusion. Right, well, that's all for our main stories today, but before you go, I have a few fantastic bonuses as well. For our first bonus story today, we have a podcast from the Japan Times called their Deep Dive Podcast. And this week, they take a deep dive into Japan's relationship with fusion. Since recently, Japan proposed its first ever national strategy. And they talk about everything from Japan's contribution to the Eater Project to its very own domestic JT60 upgrade talk about. For our second bonus story today, we have the announcement that Imperial College London, my own alma mater, will be the academic lead for the new £12 million project focusing on the flow of heat and matter around extreme materials and interfaces. It's a cool announcement and part of the exciting ecosystem of partnerships with universities with private companies, since this is in collaboration with First Light Fusion. For our final bonus, we have an announcement from the UK Atomic Energy Authority of a new industry challenge, offering up to $1.5 million per project, focusing on the material lithium, which is a very important material when it comes to the fusion fuel cycle and the creation of tritium. Right, well, that's all for Fusion News this week. I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please feel free to let us know, as always, by leaving a like or a comment on this video. And of course, if you want to take a deep dive into any of the stories, their links will be in the description and you can check out our Fusion News Extra podcast as well. Thanks for watching and see you next time.